Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the first official confirmation that the white dwarfs actually absorb planets. In other words, we're going to be discussing the observations that suggest that somewhere out there, a chunk of a planet is being currently eaten by a white dwarf. The study behind which you can, as always, find in the description below. And so let's discuss this particular discovery in a little bit more detail, focusing on the idea behind white dwarfs and what essentially happens in these types of star systems, and more importantly, what's most likely going to happen to our own solar system in a few billion years from now. And so let's maybe start with that. How do these stars, similar to our sun, evolve to become white dwarfs, and what happens to the entire star system afterwards? So first of all, we know that pretty much most of these stars that are slightly more massive than half the mass of the sun, up to about 8 masses of the sun, are going to go through very similar stages, although usually the more massive the star is, the sooner it's going to go through these stages. For example, we know that in about 2.5 to maybe 2.8 billion years from now, our sun is going to become slightly hotter, about 100 degrees hotter, but it's also going to be producing about 30% more luminosity. In other words, our planet is going to heat up quite dramatically. And because of this, the vast majority of water on the planet will very likely disappear. And so most of the complex life will have trouble surviving here. Then, in about 5 billion years from now, it's going to reach a stage where the sun becomes a subgiant and slowly starts transforming into a giant star, somewhat similar to Betelgeuse. This transformation is going to be somewhat hectic and will also involve what's known as a helium flash, when helium sort of starts being burned inside the star, and is also going to involve a stage known as the horizontal branch, followed by the asymptomatic branch. And at this point, it's very likely that the closer planets to the star are going to be swallowed, although it's still uncertain what's going to happen to planet Earth. But at the end, 7 billion years from now, what we're going to be left with are some planets, possibly even planets like Mars, but also a white dwarf in the center. Although in this case, since Earth will most likely get scorched by the Sun, chances are that any life that might exist here in the future will have to re-evolve from scratch. But that's of course a very big assumption, and right now it's assumed that life will perish. And so by the time that our system reaches this stage, the stage of planetary nebula with a tiny white dwarf in the middle, the white dwarf that's actually going to be around the same size as planet Earth, but basically about 60% the mass of the Sun, that's when things become a little bit more mysterious. And that's essentially where there is a completely new branch of astronomy that's sort of been created specifically for the purpose of studying these particular systems. Today it's referred to as necroplanetology the study of dead star systems and how various types of objects such as planets evolve in these systems. And in the past, quite a lot of different discoveries suggested that quite a lot of activity usually happens in these systems. For example, some of the first discoveries were in regards to various ring formations around white dwarfs. And that already suggested that either these white dwarfs are destroying these planets and creating these rings, or something else is forming the rings around white dwarfs. But since we also associate typical rings around stars with the formation of new planets, one of the implications here was that white dwarfs could maybe form new planets and create entirely new systems afterwards. Something that was later confirmed in at least one study, with other studies confirming the existence of various types of planets around certain white dwarfs. Which obviously doesn't come as a surprise, because we expect planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus to remain in the solar system. But what exactly happens to these planets? Well, it's been suggested that very likely most of them will end up being absorbed by the star itself, by the white dwarf. And a couple of years ago, we've discussed this one study that has even confirmed the planet being slowly broken up by some sort of a white dwarf. This particular planet was very likely similar to some kind of a gas giant like Jupiter or Saturn. Although in this case it was just broken up, meaning that it was losing a lot of its atmosphere and was most likely forming some kind of a ring structure around the white dwarf, with all of this potentially looking something like this. At the same time, some other white dwarfs have also been discovered to possess a lot of heavy elements on their surface, specifically elements like iron, calcium and magnesium. Now obviously it's totally fine to find these elements, but to find them on the surface is very surprising, mostly because they're very heavy so they're expected to sink to the bottom. They didn't, or they didn't yet, probably because they were only recently absorbed, 
Now this was the sign that the planet was recently absorbed by a white dwarf. In other words, both of these signs pointed at the idea of white dwarfs actively absorbing planets in their systems. Which by the way, if Earth ever survives the expansion of the Sun, is definitely going to be the fate of the planet at the end. And so in the last few years, the study of necroplanetology discovered several so-called polluted white dwarfs. The word polluted in this case means that they possess a lot of heavy elements on the surface. And the scientists in this field started to build a lot of really exciting models in order to try to basically use it as a kind of a archaeology, star archaeology. Essentially trying to work out what the entire system might have looked like, or what sort of planets it might have possessed before, by measuring how much of the material is being absorbed onto the star itself, and comparing this with mathematical models, calculating how fast these heavy elements should be sinking into the star. Which then, in theory, allows the scientists to figure out what sort of planets could have existed in this particular star system, work out their composition, work out their mass, and so on. And so one of the teams studying these particular white dwarfs and following this particular field discovered something that I guess they didn't really expect. In this case, they detected relatively high energy light being emitted directly from the star itself, specifically a lot of different types of X-rays with the X-rays in this case being produced by the material slamming into the star at an extremely high speed. Remember, this is a white dwarf, so it's a very dense object, and so its actual surface gravity is really, really high, much, much higher than the surface gravity of the sun. So when the material strikes the surface here, it usually hits the surface at very high velocities, producing a ridiculous amount of energies. And in this case, it generates a lot of plasma with temperatures of about 100,000 to maybe 1 million Kelvin. With all of this simply being a result of the collision of the material onto the surface of the white dwarf. And as all of this plasma slowly cools down on the surface, it starts emitting the X-rays visible from far away. In this case, all of this came from the white dwarf known as G29-38. The well-studied white dwarf that was already discovered to have a relatively large accretion disk and produce a lot of other variable emissions, with all of this being at a distance of about 57 light years away from planet Earth. But interestingly enough, the original observations and calculations suggested that this object is probably relatively young. It probably turned into a white dwarf approximately 500 to 600 million years ago. And so within that time, it started to absorb some of the planets that most likely existed in orbit around the original star. But because this object also contains a debris disk and also contains a lot of heavy elements in its atmosphere, while also generating these X-ray emissions, all of the signs here point at one single phenomenon. They point at an actual planet being actively absorbed onto the surface, something that's never been seen before. Moreover, once again suggesting that unlike typical stars, white dwarfs, just like neutron stars and black holes, are relatively violent. In other words, it would be very difficult to find, for example, a planet or an object of any kind with relatively permanent conditions on the surface in order to potentially establish life. And so even though generally white dwarfs have relatively constant temperature and generally don't change much for billions of years, they still might be way too violent and unpredictable to create conditions for permanent water or for permanent atmosphere. In other words, finding life around a white dwarf is most likely going to be almost impossible. Although that's obviously not something we're going to know for a very long time. Now, the thing is, well, that also applies to our solar system. Chances are, once the sun becomes a white dwarf, we're going to find ourselves in a system that is devoid of life whatsoever. And more importantly, the future sun that's going to look something like this is eventually going to very likely consume most of the planets in the solar system and do so for a pretty long time. Possibly not all planets, but definitely the ones on the closer side. But because this field is still relatively new and because we're making so many new discoveries about white dwarfs, chances are the scientists might actually discover how the white dwarfs can then reform planets and possibly even create their own miniature star systems. That's of course another question we're going to be talking about in some of the future videos. And so I guess until then, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, and maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. But either way, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.